uh, is one place where we're, where we're high, and that's because we had to pay uh, fees for our computer software uh, for support, and that comes all in one. You can't designate it and separate it out over a 12-month period. It comes in one lump, lump fee, so that's the big thing. Uh, uh, ask any question here that uh, that comes up. So, on page seven, you have the police department. The police department is 49.8 uh, percent of what we budgeted for them, so they're right on for six months. Um, then we got the municipal court. It's 49.7 percent, so they're right on target. Uh, fire and EMS at 51.6, so they're hanging right in there. And one thing I'd like to point out to you, if you'll go back to page one, down near the bottom under user fees, the heading of user fees and the ambulance services, uh, the ambulance services are at 56%. So uh, uh, that's uh, of what we budgeted. So that's, that's I think, looks well for for our ambulance services and our them redoing the billing service that they are working with and some increase in fees and and they're they're staying busy too so. building department uh, they're at 49.1 percent so they're right up they're right on target um, then we get down to the street on page 11. Um, and the street department, uh, the revenues are at 34.8%. But here again, as I pointed out in my summary for the end of May for you, uh, a large part of that will be property taxes, or some of it will be property taxes. And uh, they don't that doesn't typically come in until October, and then Again, our sales tax revenue that's allocated to the street department is is two months in arrears, just like the other. So that's our reasoning behind that. Um, out on our street expenses uh, on page 13 total. Total expenditures are at 43.2 percent for street. Um, so, considering that uh, all the things that we've had come along, like uh, trees and stuff that had to be <coughs> removed from the streets and so forth because of the wind and whatever, then uh, the lofty, which is uh, Local police and fire uh, retirement. Um, we're right on target on, at 51.2 percent on the revenues and 56.6 percent on the on the expenditures. And the differences there was in the past um, the state uh, had some investments that we were participating in the revenues. And um, those investments, uh, when interest rates drop and so forth, uh, we don't get that turn back from the state like we do instead. So that's the cause for the discrepancy. Um, general fund capital, uh, we're typically under. Uh, we have had some capital expenditures. Uh, but at any rate, we are uh, we're in pretty good shape on our capital funds. Um, same with our debt service funds. We're, we're in good shape on those. Um, capital project funds. Uh, we've had very little expenses uh, out and uh, Okay, there. The court automation fund, which is something that's mandated by, as I understand, by the 
the Supreme Court and its fine money and some of the uh, funds that go into that. And we're okay there. Um, Municipal Court Retirement. So they're on a different retirement system than, uh, than the other city employees. We're, we're all right on that. Um, down at 80, we get uh, into water and sewer. And, um, uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're at... Um, On uh, water and sewer on page 27, we're at 68.1 percent of what we budgeted. Uh, and on uh, the Expenses, we're at, uh, we're at a, we're still running okay on, on that. Uh, personnel costs are at 50.6%. Uh, the other costs are at 46.9%. And uh, we've got some in capital expenditures. Uh, not a lot, but a, a little bit. And then we get down into... Uh, Water and sewer, we're, we're still, uh, as I told you before, we had to, some invoices that we were not aware of that came in that we had to pay, and so uh, we're uh, still, uh, even though that pushed us up a little bit, uh, we're still okay on the, on the water and sewer, what we got coming in, and, and uh, uh, what we've spent thus far. Where does that show that? I'm sorry? What page are you on? 29? Uh, yeah, it comes on down to, to uh, uh, page 29. At the top of 29 it says Fund 85, Water and Sewer, and then yet the headings down the side are Transit. <coughs> I'm confused. Didn't well, um, Something happened? I, it would appear that somehow this new computer program that we've had for the last 12 years slipped a gear there somewhere. Okay. And uh, so uh, <laughs> it's really the tr transit tr 80, fund 85. So uh, thank you. Okay. Just mis just mistitled. Okay. Yeah. It, I don't know. Quite frankly, that's the first time I noticed that. But it says fund 85 at the top of the. Fund 85 water and sewer at the top of page 20. Yeah, it says fund 85, but 85 See, is. Fund uh, water and sewer, I've got 85. See, because you go to page 28 and it says fund 80 water and sewer, yeah. so it was just a little, but yeah, we got it. I'm just, but 85 is transit. Thank you. But if you come down, and of course, transit, uh, a lot of their funds, uh, expenses are reimbursed by the state, and uh, which they file for every year. Come down to the end of the report. It's 32. No. Oh, the end of this big report. Okay. Yeah, end of the big report. Well, I'll go to pay. Everybody go to page 60. That's the last page. In summary, huh? Yeah, let's jump to the end. How is it warming? We turned the fan off. Transit fund again showed up. Yeah, but down at the end here. Um, <laughs> it's 
says transit fund, but down here at the very end on the on the totals, so while we've uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, uh, we've got revenues so far this year over expenditures of uh, of uh, four thousand eight. Well, we're under four thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars, and according to our month-to-date budget, and that's just this month, we're up, uh, we had revenues over expenditures of $34,439 for the year, we're down $4,857. So, question. If we consistently somehow spend everything we make, how are we ever going to have a plan to work on the infrastructure of the water and the sewer unless we come up with a way to build into our budget and allocate funds and start chipping away at maybe have Dwayne or somebody come up with a 10 or 15 year plan that breaks it down and then start working on that. How are we ever going to take on infrastructure issues other than begging for grants, which we know doesn't work so well? Uh, well, it, some, it we some of the aside. things that, that I'll have to get for you like is we make transfers to reserves every month. Mm -hmm. for capital expenditures, uh, capital projects fund, depreciation fund. Mm -hmm. So, and, and those are showing up as expenditures, but they're actually transfers to these capital or these reserve funds. Okay? Okay. So, we're not spending everything okay. every month that we, that we get. So there, these then there's no report in here on these reserve funds. Uh, there's not a total on them. No, that's not that contingency emergency fund. That's a different one. Okay, so somewhere we have this little bank account of reserve funds that could be tapped for that project. Those projects. Right. We have a, we have about thirty some odd bank accounts that we thirty file and have every every month that we uh, that we deal with but we but we don't but we as a council don't see those re accounts this is not a this is not a balance sheet no i understand this okay is a budget report showing what we have budgeted okay. and what we have taken in what we what we've spent yeah i understand this is the operating budgets i understand that so there's okay hmm do we ever see that and i don't remember it okay I, I don't recall having produced one since I've been here. But it would sure be nice to help us as we start prioritizing projects if we know what's there for infrastructure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any qu any other questions? Sorry, go ahead. Just a little one. Workers' compensation insurance has that gone up? I mean, we didn't know they didn't warn us ahead of time it was going to go up. Uh, yeah, it typically goes uh, up. Yeah, I know it normally and we does. have to pay it all in one lump sum. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I noticed on every single one it had gone up a smidge. Not a lot, but each one had right. gone up. And, so and each department. We allocated it out according to payroll to, right. to the different departments. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Um, I have a question. Um, well, mainly about pension funds because they've been in the news so much lately uh, concerning Detroit. Um, do we have many people that are ready to retire and what shape is our pension fund in? Are we funded and... Uh, do, are we going to have adequate money to pay um, these pensions? What 
financially is our pension fund healthy? Okay, as we have a kind of an unusual situation here in that we have a we don't have a pension fund for all employees unless they want to participate. It's like a 401k. It's a 457b plan, and it's with Valley. And if they put in so much money, then the city will match with so much money. Mm -hmm. And so those those like I say, it's a it's a, a government or municipal version of a 401k plan. So uh, we only have, I think, about. 12 or 15 people who participate okay. because it comes out as a, in a payroll deduction mm -hmm. and then I can't remember for sure what the match is but it's like 3% or something. Okay. 5%? Uh, okay. Thank you. So uh, now the uniformed fire and police that's where the LOPFI comes in and that's by state law. Yeah. We don't have an option there. And that's all handled with the state. We make the contributions, they invest the money. Uh, and that, that you said was running a deficit? Uh, the, some, of the, some of the money that we in the past have gotten and as contributions back from the investments to help with our contributions, we don't get any more. The funds themselves, I don't think, are in the deficit because the state legislature really, really watches those lofty funds very, okay. very, very closely. Okay. Then the, excuse me just a second, then the municipal court and those employees, they're in a different retirement fund and those are, are solid too. I mean, we just make contributions to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, here, looking back at the uh, uh, water and sewer disguised as municipal court retirement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, the water, the water revenue. What page are you on? Uh, 26. Water revenues uh, from water sales and sewer fees down quite a bit and that's that reflects from last year so that reflects quite a bit of the the income has Dwayne made any reference to that as to why or is that again is that are these consistent that's what I don't know if this is consistent with the last few years and well I know it's not last year because it's down pretty significantly well it's uh, 42.8 percent the total revenues and uh, so uh, that's probably because we hadn't hit the dry season yet and the irrigation meters hadn't been utilized a whole lot. And uh, uh, Well, for that much difference, and most, most people that water their yards significantly have a separate meter with no sewer fee anyway. Right. That's true. So... Um, I don't know. That's just kind of. Uh, but then again, I'm not saying that they're necessarily extremely severe, but but they're 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 pretty high. Uh, that total revenue through that through that area there is is uh, you know from last year is what seventy grand difference. Well, from five hundred ninety seven to five hundred twenty nine. In utility revenues. Water sales here versus water sales here. There's a difference. Well, you got, yeah, you got that. One. But I'm talking about in, in in this total, you've got seventy grand right at it, sixty-eight. You know, if you want to get technical. Well, uh, just if you look back at last year, 110 degree weather with the drought and we're not facing that this year that could be that 10 percent and I'm sure we had an extraordinary usage last year 
I don't. I haven't. Uh, did, Dwayne has yeah, it. So yeah. There's no alarms or anything. Well, you? we're always running short with all the problems that we have, on, and we have to put money in from uh, uh, borrow money, so to speak, from the general fund, uh, and then it'll come back in and so forth because the water, the water runs about 30 days behind actually when from the time it's read the meter's read till it's billed till we actually collect the money and so uh, you, you've got a delay there but uh, the only explanation that I can that I have for for it is that we haven't had as dry weather this year and people uh, haven't turned on their uh, Irrigation meter. Now they're not filling the pools as much and that kind of thing. That might be significant. I mean, yeah, your motels. I mean, because of the evaporation factor, that's big. That would be that would be a big user. Uh, but I don't know. It's a pretty significant number. Yes, sir. So, <coughs> kind of follow along with that, Mr. McClung, and, and what you mentioned earlier. It, what, could that also be related to? Perhaps you know five percent downturn in our visitors here and usage in hotels using water and sewer. I'm just saying I don't know. I mean that could possibly be uh, a portion of that. Well, as well as the weather. That's always a possibility. However, the everything that I have seen has shown that that the indicators that we look at. Uh, that does not seem to be the case, but it, I mean, it always obviously could be, but when we look at, of course, sales tax is too much behind, you know, what we've collected, but comparing it to last year, we're still up uh, a little over what we were last year. I think I sent that out to you all in an email, maybe. That may not be the case, then, yeah. And uh, from the CAPC collections, and Mayor, correct me if I'm and Terry, you would know this uh, too, being on the that Mr. DeVito. Are they down? A little bit. Uh, so, and those are those CAPC collections are pretty much right on, you know, right up to to snap. So, uh, I suppose it's possible, but the indicators are not there. But. I can't, can't remember if this is CAPC or, or, or council. Had we agreed to do a quarterly review? Am I correct in that? So we're going to be revisiting this again in September? Or am I thinking of the CAPC? I think we at council decided a quarterly review. Okay. Uh, quarterly, I think, is, and especially since we're coming into the last six months of the year, I think that we really need to stay on top of, of uh, all of this. And uh, so I would, I would encourage, even if it wasn't here, I would encourage us to do that uh, because uh, of uh, it being the last six months. And, of course, we get down toward the end, you know, we may have to do it more than just the quarter. We may want to do it, you know, at November 30th or something. As soon as we Mayor, if I could have it. Go ahead. Oh, I answered your question. Go ahead. Uh, I just want, I wanted a little bit of explanation on, uh, for, for my mind, on uh, the items that put us over budget there for water and sewer fund 80. I think you, you, you mentioned it, but I. Page. Yeah, that's uh, 27. We're over budget uh, 68. We're at 68 percent at this point in the year. And you mentioned there were some items that were. Well, we had some engineering fees and some things that uh, uh, somehow got kind of lost in the shuffle, and uh, we were behind. Uh, oh, I don't know, uh, several thousand dollars on those, and uh, uh, they had not really call it to our attention, the engineering company, and uh, so then when it did come to our attention, well, we started trying to get caught up on those, and quite honestly, we in the finance department had not seen them, so we had to try to make allowances for that, and that was the big issue. Okay. 
And so this was outstanding engineering invoice. It wasn't brought to your attention. It was probably delivered at one point in time. And just being an engineer, I kind of know what it might have happened. It got lost and was never paid, and they never followed up until a couple right. months later. Yeah, that and uh, plus the fact that, you know, we've had problems down at the SIR plant and uh, okay. stuff. You know, that's primarily the issues, as, as I understand it. Question. When are we starting the 2014 budget process? Uh, we'll start the, that probably around the 1st of November. Uh, and we are, we are required by state law to have it to you all, you all being the, the council, uh, on by December 1st. And we have to approve it by what date? January 31st. So we have two months to review it and go over it. I think and, it's and you have the process. December the 31st, isn't it? For their approval? No. Is January first? 30th. No, no, no. no. I said we, we get it to them by December the 31st. December, December 1st. First? Okay, I thought it was 31st. Because we, we have. Let's be thinking about something else. We've got a lot of stuff happening okay. right in there, and it's always a big push okay. to get it. So, yeah, let's forget what I said. So basically, department heads have one month to do their departmental budget and get it to you, and you review it and get it in format. Kind of? Are they working on it now? Or I mean, that's, that's a short... I would say they probably are. I know they're, they're tracking where they are on, on this budget very very so, so so pretty much then if, if if they only have a month to do it in then they're pretty much doing historical based budgeting not zero based budgeting they're just taking what they ran and inflating by two or three percent for inflation and going ahead and hoping the revenues there to match it no no, that's not the way that, okay. that that's been presented to me. I'm, uh, Just check it. <laughs> it's not the way it's been presented to me uh, all right. by all the departments, for that matter. Uh, they, uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that they don't use some of their historical numbers, but um, as they should. As they should. Uh, but that's not the foundation for for the budget. But their operating expenses and all are all, are all based on justification of each line item. That's what I understand, yes. That's what you expect? That's what I expect. Okay. And if we don't, if we think it doesn't look right, well, then we go back and, uh, and redo it. Okay. Ask them to redo it. Any other questions? I, uh, Mayor, if I had, if I could just have a couple more minutes. I know the hour is getting late, but, but I had uh, told you all in an email that I would have some suggestions on, on water sewer rates for you. And um, I'm working on those. I don't have all the data that I need to make any suggestions, whether to stay where we are, whether we need to increase or whatever. But I've been doing a lot of, uh, uh, giving a lot of thought to our, as you alluded to earlier, our long-range plans and where we need to go and what we need to do on our infrastructure and so forth. And thus far... I have not seen a comprehensive, progressive plan that outlines what we need to do, what targets we need to try to hit, what the costs are going to be. And I was wondering if it would be within the council's purview here at some point to have workshops or uh, subcommittees or whatever to try to help Dwayne, and I'll be involved in it also, I'm sure, come up with some kind of a plan with target days. And I don't know how everybody keeps talking about we need to do something about infrastructure, but I have no earthly idea what kind of money we're talking about. You know, I don't know if we're talking about a million dollars. I don't know if we're talking about five million dollars. I don't have any <laughs> earthly idea. And so I would like to see some kind of a plan put together and uh, some numbers that I can work with because there may be some ways that we can start doing 
some of the things that we need to do if we have a plan, if we have some targets, and if I know how much money that we're going to need and what kind of time frame they're going to need it in. So I just throw that out there. Right now I'm just kind of waving, you know, yeah, I agree. And I don't have the expertise to do that. So I'll just throw it out for consideration. Mr. DeVito. I think we're kind of moving in that direction, albeit slow, but I, I thought that's the way government was supposed to work. That's a joke, by the way. Um, <laughs> we've established a, a somewhat of a priority list. Part of what the uh, town hall meeting on the 19th is going to get citizen input as to what they feel priorities are. And I would feel better after we engage the citizenry as to what they feel are their important topics that, that we would finalize some type of a wish list, priorities list, and then allocate a number to that. So we're kind of moving in that direction. Well, I say that because you know, Wayne, he is so uh, he, he is so covered up with trying to solve the everyday, day-by-day -day problems and it's impossible for one person even in his position with his knowledge to, to I think, to come up with what I'm suggesting. I don't disagree with what you're saying, uh, Mr. DeVito, at all, but, but let's get some kind of a plan in place Try to, a wise man once told me, plan your work and then work your plan. Mr. Perk, Bob, I'd like to address that, Lonnie. We're, uh, we're actively pursuing that right now. And in fact, Dwayne has, and I've seen his spreadsheet, uh, he's had the help of uh, a local engineering firm to develop order of magnitude costs for some of the infra larger infrastructure issues. Now, those are in the uh, several million dollars each. You know, we're talking about sewer. We're talking about uh, water distribution. We're talking about streets and drainage. Uh, and what we're trying to do by having this town, our meeting, our town hall meeting, is to elicit uh, some comments from the from the public, but also to inform them and and sort of indicate that we're trying to hone down and zero in and help. Um, identify these these areas that we we could really help, and and I think it's very interesting and and very encouraging to hear you say that if if we had a priorities list, that uh, let's start looking at it from a financial perspective and and identify some of these and and you know we may not be able to do a, a ten million dollar sewer project, but we might be able to identify some of the worst sections. Uh, we might be able to you know, work on things like, I won't belabor the issues, but things like uh, identifying our leakage in, in, in our water distribution system um, and, and some of the other areas that we need to really focus on. So, appreciate you bringing that forward. We're working towards that goal. I just, I just want to say that I don't mean to be critical of anyone or anybody. I hope nobody took it that way. But I'd like to like for us to have some go. I need some ideas about money. You know. Mr. Mitchell, go ahead. Not to belabor the point because we have, but I definitely, and we're, we're doing the priorities, and one of those priorities is infrastructure. There is no doubt. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if the public doesn't have it within the top three. It would be amazing, but that's quite possible. But it's for sure one thing. This council needs to develop, in conjunction with the finance department and public works, a very workable and active plan that lays out the infrastructure process and divides it into whatever pieces that it needs to be done and so that that roadmap is available not only for the rest of the term of this council, but the council after it and the council after it instead of kicking this can down the road. It's been kicked down enough. Well, it's like what we 
trying to accomplish at the CAPC, and that's develop a five-year plan and a ten-year plan and prioritize those and work toward that and allocate resources to that and be aware of the reserves and if the possibility exists to be tapping into that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully within 90 days we can have something like that. Anybody else? Yeah, okay, nothing else on this, and we'll close this and move it. Item number two, North Main parking lot restaurant. Move to discuss. Second. Second. There is, each member got a packet last time uh, from Mr. Berry, which is the entire plan on the on the North Main restrooms. Uh, I hope, did everybody have time to look at it, go through it? <laughs> Everything yeah. you ever wanted to know about a restroom. Okay. <laughs> Everything you wanted to know. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. If not... Next time we have Mr. Barry here to answer questions about the particulars. Um, what I would like to ask the council if I know to do a Mr. B Mr. McConnell. Are, are, are you ready for bids on or no? I don't think he's got them. Each one of these, I think he ha said he has to stamp the final edition, and it still has to be approved by the Arkansas Department of Health because it is a, a public restroom. And as far as the council goes. Uh, Consider we're going to have to do bids on it. There's no doubt about that because I don't think you're going to waive waiving on it. And my, my understanding is it's going to run between 40 and 50. We try to cut some corners the best we could, but I think that's what's going to wind up being between 40 and 50 grand. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yes. Sir. And that money is coming from where? Lonnie can best explain that. He is. Uh, he is the money man down on All that, that reserve I fund ready for this one. stashed away. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Yeah. It's a little bitty bus, money. It's no big deal. No, it's uh, uh, it was just a, a little excess that uh, I prepared the budget that I kind of stuck over to the side and uh, for uh, a little bit of a project or two, and this is one of the, the main projects. And so so it, was, it was budgeted. So I've got it covered. Thank you. Yes. How many more of those little squirreled away? <laughs> <laughs> that's why he brought that up tonight. We need to. We need. That was actually on, on the agenda. agenda. Yeah, that was on the agenda from last time. You just have to know <laughs> how to ask. Yes, there you go. So, uh, it, aside from Mr. Uh, Barry getting his finalization on on the two issues that we just discussed, uh, I hope the council would take it upon themselves to consider this maybe for next time in order to uh, put it out for bids because I think all the details of the of the drawings are done I think he just has to <coughs> stamp them and give you somewhere. that authority tonight to move to it'll have to be an, it? it'll have to be an ordinance oh. to, uh, to go into the bid process to put it out for bids. is that correct Mr. Weaver? I'll have I'll to review it but you're probably right yes yeah. so, so, have a motion and even, even to waive it you would have to put it in an ordinance so can, we give, yeah, can, can we give you a motion to, to draft the ordinance? <laughs> uh, you can you can direct Mr. Weaver to do so. Should if you're to that stage now, I want you to make make sure you're very comfortable with what you're looking at, what's present before you. Yes, sir. I don't think we have to have an ordinance for it. I think we we can. I think you can have a vote to accept or reject. I don't think it takes an ordinance. It would wait. Otherwise. Oh, Here, there's my way, buddy. <laughs> well, we've already decided that we're going. We would have to bid on this. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty sure you will have to go out for bids unless you wait the bid, which I doubt you want to do. Then I, I, I suggest we wait until these are final and you bring them forward, and okay. we, uh, and you, okay. you know, we'll prove to have them go out for the bid. I will stay on Mr. Berry to get the finalization and see where you, what status he is. Okay. And then the other part of my discussion on this will come on under Mayor's comments. So I'll tell you what, where it, it's about to happen. It won't cost the city anything. It's free. Volunteer. Uh, moves us on to number three, Land Bank, Mr. Levine. We need a motion to discuss in a second. Uh -huh. Second. Floor is open. Good evening, everyone. Almost good morning. Uh, <laughs> Dig, dig. 
Uh, I, I just, uh, I, this is something that there's probably too much to it to really uh, have any hopes of discussing it completely tonight, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the philosophy is behind this. So this came up in 2011, and uh, so the sense of urgency you can see uh, isn't great, but uh, uh, I, the philosophy of this is that when the city who has all these separate little bitty pieces of property, and some of them are truly small and they're truly out of the way, uh, and if the city should decide to sell these, which are, they probably should, or we probably should, then there should be some kind of mechanism so that the city does not lose property. So if you create a land bank, this allows us to, to put the money in a fund that will be used for land and for land only. And um, it's not in a, an original idea. It's done all over the country. Uh, and it, I think another aspect of it is that if somebody who is a springs enthusiast or that they want to see recharge areas around the springs or their trails enthusiast or they're just a city enthusiast who wants to see the money put to good works, we may be able to get donations into this fund as opposed to being in the general fund. It will be its own dedicated account for land purchase and land only. It's not meant by any means for if the city decides to uh, uh, sell a fairly substantial piece of property or an expensive piece of property. That That's not an intent to go in here. That's a separate transaction. But uh, we did find that the city owns 320 acres of streets in what's mostly the historic district and it's unusual that a city has been deeded these streets but we have a document signed by I think it was Chester Arthur uh, in 1896 who said so uh, that we have the deed uh, we don't have a traditional title to these streets but we have a document saying that it has been given to the city so we have those uh, parcels here and there that we can, uh, when we do dispose of, we hope that we can put that money in the land. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that may be confusing uh, is in Section 10, and it took me a while to remember what it was that we had in our minds in 2011. It says, any additional financial con contributions made by the Parks and Recreation Commission to the land bank may be reimbursed from the land bank account. And uh, a good example of that is up at the, uh, the artist colony at the intersection of Mill Hollow and Main. The uh, city owns several lots, and Parks purchased three lots on its own and made that a complete uh, block. So the city now owns an entire parking area uh, that's there, and it was made complete by funds that parks uh, expended to buy that. So there may be a case where uh, parks may want to get out ahead of the curve if there's something. We have a piece of property that's next to magnetic that is absolutely vital to uh, uh, that whole spring property. Uh, and... Uh, <coughs> it goes on and off, on and off for sale. And it's one of those things where I don't know if we're going to have the time to go through a lot of different mechanisms to, uh, to purchase it. So that may be a, an isolated case. But uh, pretty much that's it. Yes, sir. Bruce, are you thinking uh, that Parks would have autonomy <coughs> control of this fund? No, uh, the land bank committee... Uh, will be, and there's several people on it, and it makes it hard to read because everybody has Eureka Springs, Arkansas in front of it. It's got uh, the director of parks, a council person, uh, a pu public works, uh, a parks commissioner. We waited a little bit, but in the final uh, judgment, and I, I'll defer to Mr. Weaver, I think the city can nix about anything. 
it, this is just a screening process that goes to the city, and then there's another level of scrutiny that goes over it. Why the director of finance, our our city money person, isn't in there anywhere? Uh, at the time, it wasn't thought of. We could put that in there. Well, Lonnie, not trying to give him another job. But yeah. <laughs> It's, it's no, nice we can easily amend that. Absolutely, all money control. I don't think we hand one. I, I don't think this is going to be a real high volume committee that is going to meet constantly. I think it's just going to be on a case by case, and then we bring that to the city council, and the council has the final say on on any of it, really. So it's a it's more of a screening process than anything, at least the way I see it. Now, Mr. Weaver may look at it differently, or maybe he hasn't looked at it. <laughs> We keep talking about 2011, two years ago. Didn't we start this like four years ago? Or uh, maybe it was. I, I may be wrong. I, I, I think, think it think went I through a before. reading. Huh? I was on the council. Yeah, we were on council when we were first. I thought it was a done deal, and we were <laughs> good to go. No, nothing ever happened. No. Okay. Because I know well, we worked on it together. Madam Clerk, was there a is there a date on that one? Do you, you recollect? <laughs> it's probably the one 2009, 2010. Something like that. Something like that. Like 40 was read one time in 2011. Okay, but I think it was discussed before that. Yeah, okay. So I thought we finished it. <laughs> well, it's got a number, so we had to finish something. So if there are any other questions? And we can maybe discuss this more at length at the next meeting. Earlier? What about the agenda? Earlier? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Probably need a motion to leave it on the agenda by. So moved. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, Sam? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right, that moves us on to number four, uh, resolution moratorium on business license for tours. Make a motion to give it a number and read it. Second. Okay. Need a, need a motion to discuss? Oh. Well, that would... Okay. Yeah, whatever right. it is. Okay. <laughs> Everybody getting punchy now. So you're making a motion to discuss? Yes. And give it a number. I think you didn't even number the game. first. I don't know. Good for you. Yes. Keep it oh, up, so please. Good. Did we get a second on that motion to discuss? So I'll move on. Okay, thank you. That's <laughs> all right. All in favor of the resolution? Right. Signing your re resolution number. Please. <laughs> See, I'm getting, I'm getting there too. Yeah. I thought we were okay, discussing it. almost too much going on tonight. Oh so, um, is there a motion to? Okay, there's a motion a to number? assign a number and yeah. right to put second. On the first why did the okay. number first? Are we supposed to do a number yeah. first or discuss first? We wouldn't do both it since it's in the same Sign motion. Sign number and... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a question, procedural question. If we assign a number and discuss it, when does it get read? And if it's read, is it passed? We would actually assign the number when you're going to read it. And you probably, in the motion to read it, should either say for approval or to be approved by another vote. What he said. <laughs> so which would you prefer? I want to give, give it a number and read it and approve it. For approval. For approval. Yeah. So we're assigning a number and reading for approval? I'll second that okay. one. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. Stand by. And a wolf. Coffee. I didn't bring coffee. Yes, the resolution number will be 622. Let me read it. That'd be lovely. Resolution number 622, resolution establishing a moratorium on the issuance of new business license 85.3 tour guide service and 84 tour vehicles. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas is in the process of reviewing the use of business license category 85. Point three and 84. Now, therefore, be resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that the City Clerk is hereby directed to neither accept any new applications for nor issue any business license category 85.3 tour guide service or category 84 tour vehicles for a period of 90 days 
ending on October the 20th, 2013. Make a motion to accept. It's a, it's a done deal. Uh, oh, it's done. That's yeah. right. It's a resolution. All right. Yay. Coordinates. Okay, the is on the agenda setting. Mr. DeVito. Uh, I guess we didn't say to leave the restrooms on the agenda, so I'll move that uh, the North Main parking lot restrooms be added to the agenda. Second. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Mr. Devina? No, sir. Mr. McClung. Now, before we go further, wait a minute. Didn't we, were we going to rediscuss or reread or something the resolution that the council did against SWEPCO since it apparently wasn't clear? No. no. It wasn't no. discussed any time during this. No. You, you can do it. Do we, can we add that to the agenda real no. quick since we've already done you it? can add it to the next agenda. Can't do it tonight. We're already no. in the setting discussion yeah. for next. Said before we go further. Good grief. <laughs> well, we've already started this. Right. Mr. McClung, nothing. Nothing. Mr. Mitchell, no, sir. Mr. Perkupa, uh, yes. Uh, Black Bass Dam website. Second it. The website. Uh, well, Black Bass Dam is going through the website. Okay. Mr. Snyder. Okay, I'd like to add the resolution re to reread the resolution we already did on SWEPCO. I'm looking at the attorney. Don't we already did a, res What's the read a resolution? Of re it? Just well, because obviously it isn't clear to a couple people. Well, regardless, so can we just take two seconds and reread that resolution as performed on whatever <laughs> date it was? Council votes on it. Yeah. If you get a second, I mean, it's okay can, to do you can, that. You, you can legally revisit the issue, but okay. Well, I would like to add it on there just to reread because if there's people confused, including a newspaper man, That's I would. I don't think five seconds of our time is going to hurt anything in view of what it entails. I'll. S Oh, God. Thank God, it's five it seconds. I'll, I will second it just to clear it up. <laughs> Thank you. Good forward. It may be seconded. Five yes, seconds. What we need is a resolution opposing all routes for Swepco Towers. That's what she was asking for. Now, no, the resolution that we said do, does that okay, but if that doesn't do that, then we need a new resolution. You need to yeah. talk to the city attorney. And I don't have a copy of one. So how do we put this on the agenda then? Just it's discussing just it? There. It's on there. To revisit it, and yeah. if we need to tweak it, we can. So okay. it, was, it was made okay. second in it, so it's well, on Who was the second on the resolution opposed to the Thank you. Ms. Zella? No, that's, what, that's all I have. Council comments, Mr. DeVito. <laughs> no, uh, Council comments. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who turned out for the spaghetti dinner. We served uh, 162 people and raised about $2,600 uh, for Save the Ozarks. And uh, I applaud the people who turned out en masse for that event. Thank you. Uh, just a, a reminder uh, for people that. Uh, to plan ahead for August 19th with, for the town hall meeting. Uh, we hope to have a good turnout and, uh, and really uh, set some direction for the city. And that's also a reminder because all our department heads will be there too, so they need to be re yeah, reminded. Yeah, of all we need that, to that discuss that too. Uh, I, I don't think it was ever clear to me that they all be there. Uh, I, I think I should have been asked about it for them to be there because I don't think the council has the authority to make them be there. Now, with that said, I don't want it to be a shooting gallery in my department heads because me and the city council and the finance director should be the ones fielding the questions, not the department heads. Y'all can ask them. I don't have a problem with that. But if it's the general public going to start throwing darts, then I'll pull them. Personally, I never thought so it, I. I never that thought never entered my mind. You so didn't go to the last two meetings that, that, that we went to. That never, that never <laughs> well, entered my mind at all. Yeah. And that's just from experience. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm on the cover from my 
department head, so it's my job. That's, that's fine. I mean, if, if y'all want them there, that's, that's, they're not going to be tied to any weapon poles. Of my, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, okay. that was. Well, yeah, but you don't think you won't be in, you won't be throwing the questions. The uh, public will be throwing questions okay. at them. D does that make sense to y'all? I mean, do you understand my position on this? Yeah. They weren't there. I think the questions were going to be filled at the end of time, weren't they, or were they not? I but don't think Regardless. Pre-set pre questions. Regardless. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, whoever's I'm just, going to be there. I just, want to cover, be. I just want to cover my department heads. It's the 19th. Because... The the other thing is that, again, just uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting that uh, uh, Ms. Foster uh, resigned from the CABC. Yes. Thanks for her service, and we need commissioners. We've got two holes there to fill. So, uh, step up late, please. May I ask a question? Which slots are open? Those two. <laughs> One is restaurant. Have, and is there? What's they're not specifically designated, but we don't have, we won't have any restaurant representatives on the CAPC. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mitchell, you're up next. Oh, I'm sorry. Why Mr. No, Mitchell, you're up. No, I'll pass. It's not, uh, let's see, Mr. Perkins. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say thanks to. Chris at Public Works for dealing with a, a sewer issue that was a city's problem and he and the crew went out there and took care of it, swabbed it, a basement out and, and the uh, homeowner was just uh, very, very appreciative. Thanks guys. Mr. Honey. Yeah, I want to thank everybody who showed up a week ago for the uh, public hearing. It, it's, in my opinion, really a shame that the judge that heard everybody here for two days isn't going to be the deciding factor. She really seemed to get it. Um, the people pulling together was, was really awesome, and it is times like this that I really appreciate living here because we can be cat and dog fighting, stabbing each other, and something like this comes up, and we're right there together. I, I really, really thought it was great. I would like to admonish our citizens at the same time though please when we do have public hearings when we do have community meetings when we're trying to figure stuff out let's keep it polite obviously there's going to be two sides let's keep it polite thank you Ms. Ellen? no I don't have anything okay, move it to me uh, in conjunction with the North Main restroom issue that we just talked about here, um, on or about the 27th of this month, I had already had already informed y'all that the uh, folks from Warren, Arkansas, are coming up here to meet with a church group from from Kansas to do volunteer work within our city, and they're going to they're going to work on the North Main parking lot where the restroom is going to go. They'll be divvied out in different places. Uh, that I've designated for them to clean up and that means trash and brush and trees and uh, and a few other things so uh, and it's not costing us anything the local churches are going to be picking up their places stay and feeding them and plus whatever they do themselves so we will have a group of volunteers in town doing exactly what we've been discussing that we needed done for free so that's, that's one issue uh, I don't think we've had a city council meeting since our last issue regarding the Spring Street closing. Have we? Have we had a council meeting since then? I don't think we have. Okay. What I would like to say and, and reiterate the same thing Ms. Snyder says is when we have these meetings, don't come there and be nasty. Uh, come there, and Ms. Schneider was at the same meeting I was, and I think Ms. Eller was also. Uh, the folks that tried to be polite and just make a point were, were sneered at and, and just just treated really nasty, Just and it was unnecessary. They couldn't be heard of what they had to say because everybody else was right and they were wrong. So just just give everybody a chance to say what they have to say. Uh, if you can do it at, the, at this meeting that, that Ms. Uh, Schneider 
talked about, then you can do it at the other meetings where it has stuff to do with the city directly. Now, uh, I've got a list of stuff here I want to read. These are activities. July the 26th to the 28th, summertime in the Ozarks. July the 30th is, uh, is it Altius? Altius? String Quartet at the auditorium at 7 o'clock. July the 31st is Blood Drive in the Ozarks from 1 to 6 p.m. August the 2nd through the 3rd is Big Yard Sales. August the 2nd through the 4th is the Diversity Weekend. August the 8th is John Michael Talbot, 7.30 p.m. at the auditorium. August the 9th through the 11th, the Eureka Springs Multi-Sport Festival, better known as Eureka, and will be held in Eureka Springs. I don't have anything else that I can think of. Is there anything that we missed? Uh, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed?